We'll delve the deepest, darkest tomb. We are the brave companions. We'll brave the ancient forest gloom. We are the brave companions. We'll slay the lich. Last episode, uh, Ezrin came into the room, drank some water uh, from the magical fountain, um, and then, let's see, Kira came in, read some of the runes on the fountain, and Merciel, um I think she did something as well, but that's basically it. They uh, revealed the room and explored it a little bit. Okay, first, Ezrin is going to attempt to eat a gold coin. Now, this isn't in the rules, but I'm just going to give him a 1 in 20 chance of choking on the coin. Uh, well, this thing's too big. Oh, a 5, that's close. If he'd rolled a 1, he would have choked on the coin and died a glorious death, and it would have been fun to make a song about that. But anyway, next up, Kira is going to throw a third of the gold into the fountain. Um, so... Since Doug didn't answer my question about where he's going to get this gold, I'm going to say that's a third of his own gold. So I'm going to remove 20 gold pieces from his character sheet. As he dumps it into the fountain. Um, when he does that... The um, there is kind of a, a sort of a hum, and the, the the glow around the water in the fountain seems to intensify uh, slightly. Okay, he also is going to draw his scimitar after Valeros comes in and kicks the door open. Uh, next up, Mariciel is going to take the masterwork da dagger, so um, that will increase her attacks by. Um, if she uses the dagger, it will increase her attacks by one. Now she is going to move into the room and listen to voices. So she's going to make a perception check, and her perception, Marcel, her perception is plus seven. So she gets a 5, which is 12, which is actually not good enough to, to, uh, to learn much about the, the voices that she hears. Uh, she, does, she can tell that they are coming from this passageway, um, but besides that, um, she can't really, can't really make out anything else. So next she's going to check for traps. She does not see any traps uh, in this, the passageway, and the door itself does not appear to be trapped either. Okay, and then finally Valeros is going to come in here and kick open this door. And since Jacob did not respond, uh, I'm officially kicking him out of the game. Um, and then I think Chris has a friend that might take over the Barbarian, so for now she'll just come along and, and move in here with everybody else. Okay, so Valeros is kicking open the door into the next room. The door silently swings open to reveal a chamber bathed in red light. On the east side of the room, actually the way this is set up, it's the north side, um, a pair of stone statues, one right here and one right there, a um, pair of stone statues stand on either side of a dusty altar that is inscribed with runes. Atop the altar sits a large, large red gemstone right here. The creepy light, red light comes from this gemstone. Okay, so I'm going to assume for a moment that Valeros just stepped inside the door as part of kicking it open. Um, and as soon as he steps inside the room, a large, a booming voice, apparently coming from the statues, says, Approach with humility and live okay so that's it let me make sure you can see the room it's a small room but see, see it a little bit better okay so tell me what you want to do in the comments and we'll go from there one quick thing i forgot to mention is that their only way out of this room is another pair of stone doors over here to to the right 
The adventurer's work is never done. We are the brave companions as long as there are errands to run. We are the brave companions. Battle's done, we'll raise a cup. We are the brave companions. Rest a while.